criticism Cheney is facing from members of her own party. That's coming up in about 20 minutes here on WAMU. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour. How to tackle the biggest global crisis. President Biden's national climate advisor on what's next. That's Wednesday on the PBS News Hour. Listen tonight from 9 to 10. Coming up Thursday on the Kojo Now, we show throughout the pandemic, neighbors and support organizations stepped up their efforts to help those in need. In our latest Kojo in Your Community, Neighbors Helping Neighbors, we speak with some leaders of nonprofits and the local volunteer who has gone above and beyond. That's Thursday at noon on WAMU 88.5 and streaming at kojoshow.org. disappeared from a DC homeless shelter. She's never been found. What could I've done for her not to be in this situation? Through the cracks, coming soon, wherever you get your podcasts. Support for WAMU comes from Genesis, a global cloud contact center software provider. More at Genesis. That's G-E-N-E-S-Y-S dot com. Montgomery College, proud partner of the Thick MC Foundation. Building a destination for innovation in academics, business, and research. More at montgomerycollege.edu slash PMC. Support for NPR comes from this station. And from Cigna, a global health service company dedicated to helping people improve their health, well-being, and peace of mind. More information is available at Cigna.com. From Atlassian of collaboration software like Jira and Trello. 83% of Fortune 500 companies use Atlassian to help teams stay agile, aligned, and connected. Learn more at Atlassian.com. And from the listeners who support this NPR station. It's All Things Considered from NPR News. I'm Ari Shapiro. And I'm Elsa Chang. We know a number of off-duty police took part in the Trump rally on January 6th, which turned into a siege on the U.S. Capitol. A Houston officer who allegedly entered the Capitol now faces federal charges. He has resigned. And other police departments are investigating whether any of their officers broke the law in Washington, D.C. But they're also deciding if the events at the Capitol change where to draw the line for officers when it comes to politics and free speech. And here's Martin Costi reports. As far as we know, the biggest contingent of off-duty cops at that rally came from Seattle. At least five officers. They're being investigated and there's no public evidence yet that they broke the law. Still, alarm bells are going off for some people in the city. What more can we do to help understand how deep the iceberg really is here. Douglas Wagoner is a member of the Community Police Commission, a citizen advisory group which discussed the matter in a Zoom meeting. Because I just, I can't think of anything that's more problematic for trust between SPD and the community, especially at this already tenuous moment, than to find out that there are potential officers potentially involved in this attempted coup. Another member of the group, a black officer named Mark Mullins, talked about colleagues who've worn MAGA hats to the precinct. To me, that's like wearing a Confederate flag or, or bringing a Confederate flag to work. Underneath this discussion, there's a deeper question. Is it still acceptable for cops to be pro-Trump? 
It's not a call that Andrew Meyerberg wants to make. He runs Seattle's Office of Police Accountability, which is investigating the five officers. His focus is on whether they broke the law in Washington, not the beliefs that took them there. I think people are entitled to their political views, and I don't think it is my job to be policing those political views unless there's some component of it that clearly violates SP policy. At the same time, Meyerberg says it's no secret that police are often more conservative than the community. It certainly creates friction when law enforcement is policing a city that's as progressive as Seattle or Washington, D.C. or Portland. Um, there is this natural friction there. Context often plays a role in whether a cop's political views are acceptable. Georgetown Law Professor Christy Lopez is an expert in this area. She says courts apply a balancing test. A police officer's free speech rights on one side, and on the other, there's a police department's interest in protecting its reputation and legitimacy. What does it tell us, for example, if an officer wants to wear a MAGA hat to a baseball game? Is that balancing test different on January 5th than it is on January 7th? Maybe. Maybe that's different after we have come to believe that Trump actually instigated an attack on the Capitol. Lopez isn't saying that the balance has changed in that way, just that it could. With that in mind, some police officers are now scrubbing their social media just in case. Houston Police Officers Union President Doug Griffith says some cops there became concerned when the chief recently vowed to search for political extremists in the ranks. We received several calls from our members asking, how is he going to do this? What does this mean? Does this mean if I like a Trump tweet that I'm going to be disciplined? Griffith assured the officers that that would not happen, though he also gives them this advice. If you can't post on your church bulletin board what you're going to put on Facebook or Twitter, then you probably shouldn't put it out there. Griffith doesn't think the many Trump supporters in law enforcement, people like himself, now have to worry about being penalized for that support. But when it comes to drawing lines, he has one of his own. He says all officers, regardless of political sympathies, need to respect the nation's electoral process and the fact that Joe Biden is now the president. Martin Costi, NPR News. I've seen a ton of tweets today asking, can someone explain what's happening with GameStop? Well, we're about to try. Okay, GameStop is a video game retailer, and its stock price was about $20 a share earlier this month. Then it rose to $240. This is because a group of amateur investors decided to take on some Wall Street giants at their own game. If anyone can sort this out for us, it is NPR's economics podcast, Planet Money, where Mary Childs is one of the hosts. Mary, you up for this challenge? I'm going to try, Ari. Okay, what's happening with the GameStop stock? So this starts in a place on the internet known as Wall Street Bets. It's this forum on Reddit where day trader types, non-professionals, trade tips, as well as memes and flexes and a lot of emojis. Right. And a while back, one of these Reddit traders started making the case that GameStop was a good stock to bet on, had all this cash. But then part of the argument became this kind of unusual thing, that it was a good stock to bet on because these big established hedge funds were betting against it. It became this kind of call to arms to take on Wall Street, and it snowballed from there. And the way they were going to try to take on Wall Street was related to short selling, which I've heard of, and something I've not heard of before called a short squeeze. What is that? Yes, so it's a lot to unpack. Let's go step by step. So first, the shorting. Big hedge funds were betting that the stock oh, for you, GameStop would go okay. down in price. That's the short part. They were short the stock. To do that, they borrowed the shares of the stock themselves, and if the price goes down, they can buy I don't.
pillars of the water. So we're gonna do like five days a week. And then you know, of course gloves, training.